Good evening, everybody. My name is Patrick Luck. I'm a Java tutor here at Chegg Tutors, and tonight I am here to tell you about the attributes of design. Whenever we work with an object-oriented programming such as Java, C++, Python, C Sharp, there's a lot of them out there, we want to make sure that our classes and objects have a very good, solid class design and object graph. There's a lot of reasons for this. This has to do with maintainability of your code, readability of your code, reducing bugs, um, explaining your code to other developers, adding new features. So this is pretty important that we have a solid class design down here. Otherwise, we're just going to make things harder on ourselves later on as we write our software, debug it, add new features, what have you. So tonight we're going to talk about three distinct attributes of design. There are more than these three, but these are the three we're going to limit our discussion to. We're going to talk about abstraction, cohesion, and coupling. Okay. And when used properly, all three of these um, design concepts will help us produce very good, well-written code that is easy to maintain and others understand by both you and other developers. So let's get started with the first one. Let's talk about abstraction here. The basic definition of abstraction is hiding the complexity of something. In terms of programming that usually means you know a lot of times you'll have an object or a class that is a very powerful, very complex class, but really you're only concerned about a few methods, for example. And so what we want to do is we really want to write our code in a way that just works with the most generalized version of that class. So think about, for example, in Java we have a very commonly used class in Java called the ArrayList. The ArrayList is a class that acts like a collection and it holds an array but it's safer than using the array data type. So for example an array would not grow you're in a fixed size where ArrayList will grow. Uh, it's easier to search an ArrayList than it is an array. If you need to shrink it, you can shrink it. These are things you cannot do with a regular array that you can do with an array list. So it's one of the most commonly used classes in the Java programming language. And now it is true that C++ and C Sharp and Python would have their own respective classes, but you know, just bear with me that we're going to limit our examples to the Java programming language here tonight. Um, but you know, the most common things we do with an array list is we'll We'll add something. We might remove something. We might get something. For example. But ArrayList has more than add, remove, get. For example, it has a method called trim to size, which basically prunes down the size of the array list to the actual memory it's consuming because an array list usually allocates more memory than what's needed for uh, the purposes of being efficient. So we really don't want to use array list directly. What we really are interested most of the time with array list is things like add, things like remove, but there's a lot of times we may not even use this. It depends on what you're doing, but especially I find myself, I, I don't really use git a lot because most of the time I'm doing some sort of a for each loop where I'm going to go through the entire array list anyways and I'm not, I don't really, I'm not concerned with what index of an object I'm trying to get because I'm going through all of them anyways. So what we really want to do to have very well written code is we want to hide the complexity of array list. So if you need the get method, you would probably use the list interface to refer to array list. 
But if you don't even need the get method, you could get away with collection even to refer to an array list. And the reason we do that is to avoid what's called tight coupling, which we'll discuss later on in this lesson. But basically, this is abstraction. We're trying to use the most general way to control an array list. So collection is by far the most general, and it hides trim to size. It hides get. So ideally, if we need to use an array list, we would use collection first. But if we need something a little closer to home, we might use list, which still hides trim to size, but exposes get. And then, of course, we still get remove, and we still get add. So that's abstraction. The idea is, is that collection and list hide the complexity of array list and only show us what we're actually concerned about with um, with the array list object in this example. Now, you want to think about this in your classes. You know, what do you really need to show the client that's using your class? And show them as little as possible, and the less you show them, the more abstracted your class is. So moving on to cohesion. Cohesion This is the degree in which logical pieces of code are placed together. So building on our example of collections tonight, we would have collections, we would have list, we would have set, we would have queue, you know, and underneath list, we might have array list. We might have tree set. And we might have linked list. This is an example in the Java libraries of good cohesion, because you can see that all of these classes do the job of what an array might do. They build on what the array does. And so they're all placed together in one logical plan object graph all underneath collections. What you do not see in collections are classes such as file input stream. You might not see result set. You might not see mm, entity manager. Now why is it? Why, why don't you see entity manager? Why don't you see result set in collections? Well, entity manager, for those who don't know, that has to do with a database. And databases are not related to collections. So we don't have entity manager along with collections. We have it in its own namespace. Result set, again, works on databases. We wouldn't want to put result set in collections. We might put result set together with entity manager because they're working on databases. Then again, we might not. File input stream, of course, is not related to result set or entity manager. And it certainly isn't related to collections. So a file input stream belongs with things that work on files. So it's very important that we think about um, if our object graph contains classes that aren't really related to the object graph, you should really consider moving those out into their own uh, namespace. It's a very telltale sign of poorly designed code when you have something in an object graph that just simply isn't related and clearly doesn't belong in the object graph. So finally, we have a final topic tonight, and this is has to do with coupling. Coupling is, first of all, whiteboard. The degree in which 
a change in one area of the software affects another area. So I'll give an example of coupling here. If we go back to our code and we have a void sort array list And then let's say later on we have an array list. Okay, so right now this code works. You, we're building a we're building an array list. It has John Doe, Jane Doe. We call sort. The problem is when we want to do something. Let's say we decide to change this to hash set. Well, now we're going to get a compiler error here because our sort method wants array list. So now we have to either add a method or we would have to change this one to take a hash set which could break something else in our code. So this is highly coupled code. This is bad. We don't want to do this. What we really want to do is write our sort method just once and only once and then have it work regardless of what type of collection we're working with. So the best thing to possibly do here is to have sort refer to collection and then do something on the collection. Now we can pass in hash set or we could pass in, pass in linked list. It could be array list again. All this is going to work because our sort method is isolated from what type of collection class we're using. It doesn't care it, as long as it's something that's a collection. So this is an example of loose coupling. Loose coupling is good because it makes our program much easier to maintain and we can isolate areas of our code for unit testing, adding new features, or fixing bugs. So these three concepts of abstraction, cohesion, loose coup or and coupling when used well, we'll end up with very well designed software. If not applied or applied poorly, we're going to end up with very poorly designed software that has that is prone to bugs and um, we're going to spend a lot of time fixing bugs, adding features, or even just explaining it to another developer. So I hope this tutorial helps you out tonight. And uh, this is Patrick Luck once again, a tutor with Chegg Tutors. Folks have a great evening. Good night.